Eating disorders, believe it or not, are some of the deadliest forms of mental illness. Tens of millions of Americans struggle with them. Thousands die every year. WSFA's Washington correspondent Peter Zampa learns more in this week's Listening to America. I'm Peter Zampa in Denver. Every 52 minutes, somebody dies from an eating disorder. Many people suffer in silence rather than seeking help. I spoke with Riley Judd, a young woman living in recovery. Social media, exercise, the dinner table, the trinity of darkness for Riley Judd from a young age. So when were you first diagnosed with an eating disorder? I was officially diagnosed when I was 12. People started to notice, like, if I was doing a lot of exercise, like, oh, wow, that's so impressive. Uh, you're so athletic. Comments like that, which further fueled. You had people those validating thoughts. this behavior. Absolutely. No matter how much weight I lost, or no matter how much exercise I did, or how much I restricted my food, it was still a constant obsession that I had to keep going, and it was never perfect. Her parents saw her rapid weight loss and acted, putting Riley in an outpatient program. But Riley's eating disorder persisted in secret, getting worse by the day. There was just complete darkness. And basically, I ended up trying to like jump over our banister. Did you want to die in that moment? It was more me just wanting to be away from the thoughts. After that, Riley's journey to recovery began for real. She entered inpatient treatment handing over control of her meals and her health to doctors and therapists for 24 hours a day. And of course, in the beginning, I was extremely resistant, but over time, gradually, I started to see what was beyond the hospital walls. I started to see the life I was missing out on, um, and I really learned kind of how to balance food in a healthy way and balance exercise and reintroduce those things that I en had enjoyed doing prior to my eating disorder. Like many struggling with recovery, her path was not linear. A relapse came years later. It's it's a lifelong battle. There, of course, I'm gonna continue to have these thoughts and negative thoughts about myself, but it's how you cope with those. After another round of treatment, Riley is now thriving in recovery. Stories like hers are common, but often don't end the same way. Roughly 80% of people struggling with eating disorders will never receive a diagnosis or treatment. Dr. Elizabeth Easton is with the Eating Recovery Center in Denver, one of several top-notch programs inside the state now known as a hub for eating disorder treatment. How hard can diagnosing eating disorders be? It can be pretty complicated, especially when you're going just based off of what most people in our culture think of as eating disorders. So sometimes we focus so much on the obesity crisis that we don't realize that people are responding to that in incredibly unhealthy ways. And they're going to their doctor and hearing, good job. For you as a treatment specialist, how delicate is that initial meeting with a new patient? It's almost like when patients come in, there's a static in their head that comes from all of these messages, whether it's from family or the culture or social media, we have to help them recognize this other influence that's in their mind and then slowly start to befriend themselves again. Why do you think there's pushback to federal legislation that could potentially help folks either diagnose or seek treatment for eating disorders? People don't recognize how rampant it is. So the stigma of keeping it quiet, there's something wrong with you or your family if someone has it, once we break that more and more, then people are more willing to put money and energy towards this illness. Treatment is not always a quick fix, but treatment can open a door to a new life. My greatest struggle is I'll look in the mirror and see something I don't like and then attach my worth as, as a human being to that. As I've grown older and had more experience, I realize that that is just such a superficial way to look at life, there is life beyond an eating disorder and that you have the strength and the ability to overcome that and find a life where you can be free and happy.